Hey Vinyl Community, it's been a while, uh, a few years in fact. Um, I used to make videos but I didn't really get any response so I kind of gave up at the time. But um, there's various people I like watching nowadays so I thought this would be a nice way to kind of connect with them on a more, more sort of personal level rather than just Instagram because you know Instagram's fun but you don't really know who you're communicating with do you really? So I thought it would be kind of fun for you to see me because I can see you and then um, perhaps we'll kind of start an online friendship and have some banter and some fun and kind of enjoy this final hobby that we all love. So I thought I'd show some records. Um, you know, I'm not an expert on the records I'm going to show. I just know that I bought them, I love them and um, I enjoy them. So why not show them? So here we are. The first one I show is Velvet Fog. I check that cover out. If that's not a 60s cover, I don't know what is. I mean, look at that. These guys were, they nailed it, didn't they? Look at that. I mean, naked women, paint, feather boa, you named Velvet Fog. You can kind of guess what you're in for with this one, can't you? Psychedelic, rock. This is kind of a mix, really. It's got, because it's this is 1969, and so this is kind of, coming to the end of the psychedelic psychedelic era and kind of going into prog and more heavier stuff. So this kind of has a mix of all of that together. Um, so it's in a way it's a bit disjointed, but at the same time, this really has some amazing moments and really interesting moments. And um, yeah, well worth owning. This is an original. Unfortunately, original copies are very expensive. Um, luckily, I got a really good deal on this. It was very cheap compared to what it's worth. So I got really lucky, but um, yeah, if you want an original, it's hundreds of pounds nowadays. But you can get reissues. Um, so if you're interested, check it out online. I mean, if you're into psychedelic rock, you probably know this one already. Um, it's interesting, it's got a blurb on the back from John Peel, the legendary Radio 1 DJ, who kind of mentions them, what talks about them. Um, quite an interesting quote. And I noticed that they kind of spelt his name wrong. I don't know if that was actually him and it's a joke or they just spot his name wrong or or what on that but anyway yeah there's a little blurb there from john peel um but yeah it's a really cool album and i've had this cover in a fr in a frame before because it's so cool uh, it's always uh, an interesting talking point when people come over you know um so yeah velvet fog check it out if you don't know it this one is one of my favorite albums of all time mcdonald and giles now to me, this album is a masterpiece. Um, these guys were in King, King Crimson. Um, they played on the first album and a little bit of session work on the second album, I believe. Um, and I think they left towards the end of the first tour or something. Um, I had a quick Google just to get a bit more info about their kind of backstory. But um, all I do know is this album is amazing. Um, if, you're like, if you like jazz, if you like prog, if you like funk, if you like King Crimson, if you like beautiful, amazing music, then buy this album. Um, the musicianship on this album is incredible. That's the thing, is that the songs are so great on this album, but the musicianship is also so good where I almost find myself listening to the musicians, I can't even talk, musicians, put my teeth in, musician, you know what I'm saying, musicianship. On this album that you kind of ignore the songs almost because you lay like listening like that drum sounds so good that guitar that bass is is so good like so tight and so perfect that you can't help but be like wow this is amazing and almost forget how beautiful the song is because it's so well done um, and if you know this album if you're a fan of this album then you probably understand what I'm saying um, but yeah, if you like King Crimson and don't know this one, I mean, buy it, buy it, buy it now, basically. And look at that cover, how cool is that, that beautiful purple. And um, this is a promo copy, American promo copy. I'd like a UK copy, but they cost a lot of money, as you probably know if you're into this sort of thing. Um, I got this really cheap and it sounds good, so yeah, I'm happy with it for now. I'd like to find a, a UK one one day. Um, but yeah, hopefully I didn't embarrass myself too much when I say musician. I still can't say it. Musicianship. 
trees on the shore. Now this is a beautiful album as well. This is an original copy on CBS. Um, this is folk, folk rock, psychedelic folk. Um, this is absolutely beautiful. If you're into collecting, you probably know this album. Um, beautiful cover by Hypnosis. Um, apparently this girl here was the daughter of one of the members of The Shadows, the drummer from The Shadows. Um, and yeah, it's just iconic cover design, beautiful music. If you don't know it, well worth checking out. Um, Celia Humphreys, the singer, beautiful voice, just gorgeous. You know, typical, beautiful 70s folk rock. If you like bands like Fairport Convention, Pentangle, and don't know this somehow, um, yeah, check it out. It's beautiful. Unfortunately, very expensive um, to get an original copy nowadays. Um, but you can get reissues. I had to pay a bit of money for that, but it was worth it to me. Talking of rare albums, Booyah, Jackson C. Frank. Um, this is an original copy from 1965, and it's cool, it's got a bit of um, history on it. Somebody's uh, wrote there, where is it? Uh, yeah, 1966 at the top there, this was given to somebody. And it's got people's names on it as well. I'm guessing, like, perhaps I can imagine them all kind of sat around together listening to this and and just all put their names on it um, as kind of as a memory. And um, now I have it, and I think that's quite nice. Um, but yeah, this is a stellar album. Jackson C. Frank, kind of a sad figure, really. Um, he was schizophrenic and um, kind of died, I think, from pneumonia. Um, and never really achieved any success. This was produced by Paul Simon um, of Simon and Garfunkel fame and Paul Simon fame, um, who I believe came to England in the 60s, kind of joined the folk times and was doing various things here. And um, yeah, this guy was an American, incredible, incredible album, just beautiful. If you like folk music and don't know this album somehow, um, just check it out online, because this album to me was like, like um, a life-changing experience when I first heard it. You know, I'm not, I know that sounds a bit like hyperbole, but you know, you know, if you love music, you know what music means to you and what it can do to you. And this album for me really was something incredible, and it still is. And every time I play it, it's something special, it's a special occasion. And to own an original copy, I mean, this is seriously rare. And this is the only original copy I've ever seen in person. Um, so I'm really, really sort of lucky and. and I feel privileged to own it. Um, so yeah, check it out on YouTube and maybe get yourself a reissue. And if you're rich, then buy an original. Um, here's another one, Davy Graham, Folk Blues and Beyond. Uh, this is another rare one. I'm showing some, trying to show some of my more special records that, from my first video, really, just just to get people interested, really. And I think I, fi I find them interesting myself. And at the end of the day, you're here for cool albums, aren't you? So here we go. Here's um, Davy Graham. This is from 1965. This guy was an incredible guitar player. Um, apparently he was a big influence on people like Bert Janch and John Renborn, who went on to form Pentangle. And I believe the bass player from Pentangle actually plays on this, I think. Um, but yeah, David Graham was an incredible guitar player, kind of a virtuoso, really, that um, for his time was sort of very influential, like I said. And even people like Jimmy Page apparently were uh, influenced by him. And um, he was a heroin addict, unfortunately, and that kind of marred his life, really. He kind of, I saw a documentary on YouTube years ago, um, a more modern documentary about him, and he really just was like a shell of a man, really. He, from heroin, he just ruined himself, basically. Real shame, because he could still play amazing, but as a person, it kind of took a big toll on him, as you can imagine, but yeah. Um, if you don't know Davy Graham and you like folk music, you like folk guitar playing, um, really, I think you'll love him because I certainly do. And yeah, check him out and look at that cover. How cool is that cover? I'll try and go a bit quicker now. Cream, Disraeli Gears. Unfortunately, uh, Ginger Baker just passed recently. Of course, Jack Bruce is already gone, and luckily, we've still got Clapton around who I love. And I'm a huge Clapton fan. Uh, this is a original American copy, 
Uh, I have a UK original mono UK copy hung on my wall at the moment. Um, but yeah, um, I don't want to get that off the wall at the minute, so here's the American one. Um, what can you say? If you know this album, you, you most likely love it. Um, just super cool psychedelic rock, 1967. Iconic, amazing. If you don't know this album somehow, then check it out. I picked this one up recently, Fairport Convention. I mentioned them earlier. Sandy Denny, one of the greatest to me, maybe my favourite female vocalist of all time. Just the first time I heard this album was the first time I heard Sandy Denny and it was like, this is the voice I've been waiting to hear all my life. This was like, oh my God, just touches the soul, you know, unbelievably beautiful. Just, and plus you have um, Richard Thompson in this band who's a great guitar player and singer songwriter in his own right. Combine that with Sandy Denny and you really have something special here. Um, not my favorite album by them. Uh, I prefer Unhalf Bricking, um, but I stupidly sold that a while ago. So I'm, I'm looking to get that back in the future. Um, but yeah, I've got this one. And um, I, also, I also have an original copy of Fothering Gay, which is the album she made after Fairport Convention, which is beautiful as well, which you should check out if you don't know. But that's a first press, original first press. So that was a really cool find. Um, and yeah, I think that'll be it for now. Um, I just thought I'd share a few cool albums, really just to kind of introduce myself. Um, hopefully I didn't embarrass myself too much trying to pronounce words because I'm a bit nervous. It's my first video, really. Um, but yeah, just to really kind of say hey and, you know, just share a few albums and hang out with you guys, really. And um, yeah, let me know um, what you think and um, leave some comments and um, feel free to subscribe. I'm going to make more videos. Um, if you're curious about that picture behind me, it's um, Dennis Hopper. Um, there was a documentary made about him in the early 70s called The American Dreamer. Um, and basically it's, I don't know how much of it is staged really, because it's basically him off his head on drugs and um, just kind of living his life. And I, I imagine he was at that time anyway, you know, doing a lot of drugs. And there's like scenes of him getting on with women in bathtubs and wandering around shooting machine guns and... It's really kind of, if you're into 70s, like, cool documentaries and films, I, I recommend checking it out, The American Dreamer, it's called. And um, Gene Clark, actually, um, there's a soundtrack album, which is what that poster, where I got that poster, um, original copy of the soundtrack I have that came sealed. And um, that poster was in it, and I was like, oh my God, I have to get this framed. And um, I recently moved into a new flat, and so I finally got around to framing it. And um, Gene Clark um, plays on the soundtrack, so if you like Gene Clark from The Birds and um, you know all the cool stuff he's done, definitely check it out because it's pretty cool. And um, yeah, let me know what you think and um, peace. See you later.